So Monday was almost ruined because I lost the Raid My Lab button, but I found it so we can raid my lab. This is one of those videos that can be uh, as interesting or as dumb as I make it. And uh, I'm probably going to sound like an old fuddy-duddy, but I happened to come across my first USB device. It's kind of amazing. Uh, you guys that are younger just don't understand the pain of trying to hook up hardware before there was the internet and before there was USB. I mean, the, the idea that, that you can plug in things and they generally work is just completely foreign. When I was young and they were talking about the idea of this being what they would call plug and play, we would talk about that, you know, what we currently had was plug and pray. You would plug it in and just hope it worked. And so this is my first USB device. This is a 256 megabyte flash drive and it still works. So let's take a look at some USB stuff. The first thing I have over here to the side, which you may have seen in some videos in the past, is this uh, Sobrent, and I have two of these, but this is a Sobrent 10 port USB charger and I think they run about 20 bucks on Amazon. But this thing is amazing. I take this on nearly every trip I go. I have one in my office, have one in my house. And uh, this thing, if you ever wanna be popular at an airport, bring one of these things because every one of these ports is 2.4 uh, amps. And so you can relatively quickly charge a whole bunch of devices at once and so I keep one on my desk at all times and I do like that you know when I'm plugging in sketchy devices or Arduino stuff that I made this isn't connected to a computer so I'm not worried about frying those kind of ports another tip I have and I think I only have two of the cables here but what I like to do when I have just a whole mess of cables like this um, I put yellow on my micro USB orange on my USB C and red on my mini USB just because when these things are in a whole pile of, of wires, it's a little hard to tell which one you're grabbing for. So a little top tip for you, I color code these things only when they're in a big pile like this. So one of the things I can kind of talk while I'm opening this stuff up is I, uh, I have a lot of this stuff because my previous job, I would build a lot of devices and I was living in rural Alaska and it was difficult to get a hold of this stuff. So you had to order it uh, way in advance. There was just no place you could buy this stuff. So I, I have a lot of it kind of left over from that and then I use it in STEM projects and stuff. We're not going to spend a lot of time going over USB power bricks and stuff like that. There's a ton of articles online, but I do pretty much save these every time I get them. Uh, these ones that are fake Samsung chargers, I think are kind of my favorite of the fakes. They have uh, um, they have a uh, two ports one of them is 2.4 one of them is one amp and i just uh i really like this particular one i've talked about it before when you get into some of the stuff with the arduinos uh this one has the same specs but a lot of times even the 2.1 amp doesn't have enough power to make the shield work uh like something like an ethernet shield with an arduino um, so we're not going to go over all the different various power adapters but i've got a bunch of them sitting here I guess I kind of lied about that. I do want to go over a couple things. Uh, this one, yeah, this is just listed as 0.15 amps max, but one of the things to really consider when you have these USB power adapters is when you're dealing with Raspberry Pis. Raspberry Pis are particularly finicky on which power supplies they want. I, I've tended to stick with Canakit, um, C-A-N-A-K-I-T, when I buy my Raspberry Pi kits. Their power supplies don't seem to give too many issues, but even the ones like those Love RPi and a lot of the other kits that are real close to the same price on Amazon, they will include a charger that might have the same specs, but just you'll see the little lightning bolt up in the upper right hand corner. And, and so when you're, when you're dealing with Raspberry Pis especially, you want to make sure that you have a really high quality high output power supply. There's not really much to talk about in these two. Um, again, this stuff is primarily hoarded because I lived in a place where I couldn't get this stuff, so if I found it at thrift stores, I would hang on to it. Um, <laughs> it seems like every time I throw all this kind of stuff away or clear out a lot of it, then all of a sudden I run out of it. So I've got standard USB cables, micro USB cables, nothing too exciting in these boxes. 
Slightly more interesting is this box that is labeled other USB. So I'm going to dump that out. Now, um, there are some interesting things in here that we're going to kind of look at. And the first one I see is this. I got this at a thrift store. This is a USB to C, C to C cable. Uh, love this type of thing for laptops. I paid like 50 cents for this at a, at a thrift store. Um, another one that's kind of interesting are these cables and you some people use them for programming or let me see if i can get up here but there, there's a few different things you can do with these this is a, uh, a usb cable that has all four pins broken out and i've seen people use these for programming arduinos or you know sometimes you just want to get the power out of a usb and and so these cables are super cheap on aliexpress and you may not have known that they existed but um yeah they're they do exist Another thing I love and I hang on to every chance I get are these little USB extension cables. And uh, this is a real short one, but I have them in all different sizes and things like that. But sometimes this is good just if you're trying to tuck something like a bigger USB device behind a TV. It's kind of nice to be able to put it in and just and you know bend this down. Uh, you know, little things like that. I like little things for that. Uh, also, if you get a chance, if you find any cables with these 90 degree ends on them hoard those because they're rare and sometimes you just need one and especially with usb like half the time it's going to come out the wrong side like you're going to want this to come out of the left and it comes out of the right so save these if you get your hands on them uh, this is another kind of cool usb adapter i found and this actually just bends it feels like a piece of junk but it uh it does something that none of the other ones do so i figured i'd hang on to it a little uh, flexible USB thing. So these things are very cool and you kind of need to know that these exist. These are little um, kind of project box style USB connectors. What's really neat about this is I have a laser cutter and a CNC so it's not really too hard for me to cut weird shapes but for a lot of people and me included when I'm in a hurry it's really difficult to take something like a USB connector and build a little hole for it in a project so what this is good for is this would allow you to use a normal round drill bit and then two screws to hold this end on here and then I have these in micro USB I don't know how well you can see it I have these in micro USB and in regular USB but what's kind of cool is let's say you have an ESP8266 inside of a project box you can come in here and I have this in 90 degrees somewhere also but um, you can plug this in Let's get it the right direction here you can plug this in and then kind of bend this down and attach this thing to your enclosure so you're inside your enclosure you have this thing kind of bundled around here and you can put this to use it to power or even program your ESP32 from outside the enclosure and so these things are really handy I have more styles of them somewhere around here but I'm not seeing them so uh, anyway just wanted you guys to know that these things exist Okay, so I had to re-raid my lab because I knew I was missing something. So I found a box, ironically labeled USB connectors, exactly what I was looking for. There we go. So the first thing I want to show you is this. This is one of those things that you may not know exists. But um, these are little barrel jack to USB connectors. So I don't know if you can see the barrel jack right there. Um... And obviously they're going to be just for five volts. But one of the things I like is that, as I mentioned earlier, it can be a bit of a pain to put a USB connector on the side of an enclosure. But with something like this, you could put a standard barrel jack jack on there and get a nice, neat thing. You can just put a round hole right in your enclosure, put it in like this, and then use a standard USB charger to power your system. So, um definitely an interesting way to go and very very cheap these cables are cheap these barrel jack things are cheap so very clean way to do things um, this is another one of those USB connectors and this one is a right angle one for um, standard USB type A uh, those things are great a stack of those things um, these are very very cool also uh, these are cheap and basically what they are is a USB port with two terminals and so you get I don't know if they're labeled yep they're labeled um, actually they're labeled yeah A and B D plus and D minus uh, maybe 
If it's D plus and D minus, I'm guessing these are actually for data. I might have to do some looking on these things. Uh, I'll put in the in the video what this thing is. I was thinking these were for power, but they may actually be for just stripping the data out. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. We'll find out. The next thing is uh, I've got a bunch of different styles of these, but these are little USB breakout boards. And... This is very cool for a project. You can, these little things, speaking of breaking, uh, break apart. But basically this one is a uh, USB, like a normal USB port. And you're gonna get your data plus, data minus, uh, your voltage and your ground as little solderable pin headers. And so there's a lot of different things like you can do with that. And uh, you know, just, it's good to know that something like this exists. Especially like when you get into trying to desolder a, a port, it can be really a pain in the butt. Looks like micro USB. Yep, so there's a whole bunch of them together here, but this is the uh, the USB port with all of those same four wires broken out here. And this one actually comes with the pin headers that you can solder on there. So lots of different things you could use this for. You could use this as a jack on the side of your project. One thing that's kind of interesting about something like this is these jacks tend to take a lot of abuse and so like let's say that you were trying to plug straight into your ESP8266 these things are really a pain in the rear end to replace and stuff so it's not a bad idea to use something like this almost as a sacrificial jack where you allow things to get plugged in and plugged out of this one and then if it breaks you just swap it out for another one because they're only a couple cents but if you break the one on your Arduino or your ESP8266 it's uh, a lot more difficult. So anyway, just, just something to think about. And uh, I've got another set of those over here. And another set of those over here. And this is... This is a micro USB soldered out to a micro USB. I know what this is for. This was a sacrificial cable that I had for my duck hunt wall. And basically I was allowing this thing to take the abuse for charging um, the little board inside the duck hunt gun. So a few other things I want to show you. Uh, this is just, this isn't a plug or anything like that, ha, <laughs> plug. Um, but man, I've gone through a lot of USB 3 and 2 hubs, but uh, I know we did a contest for uh, the Arduino Facebook group with Pluggable, but man, I bought these things and I use these things everywhere these things hold up really well they have these two chargeable ports that work even if the uh, computer's turned off and they are just rock solid i've never had one go bad and i probably have six of these things around the house that i bought just for um for you know just all the computers i have at least i think i have three of them hooked to my main computer right now just because of all the arduino stuff that i do so these are fantastic. Another thing that um, we either just gave away or are giving away in the group is this pluggable docking station. This is new. I do a lot of computing on the road and uh, even on, like I'm going on a cruise and I need to be able to set up a real computer in there and take it and go. So I just, I like the idea of a docking station. So this has uh, DVI, HDMI, VGA, uh, USB 3, ethernet and sound and all that stuff. and it doesn't specifically say on the website that it supports Linux, but I hook it up to Ubuntu and am able to use all the ports I had to install a Display Link driver for uh, to get the video to work. But once I install the Display Link driver, everything works. And, and uh, this is a very, very sweet USB device. So yeah, that is Raid My Lab and this is USB stuff. And if you have any USB devices that you really like or you, there's something I'm missing or something like that, let me know in the comments and let's talk about it. Let's talk about what is the coolest USB device that you own that's kind of out of the ordinary. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.